Well, hello. God bless you. I pray that you're having a wonderful day. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm excited about the things that God is doing, and I'm excited uh, that I will be at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight. Last night, I was in Greenville, North Carolina, preaching the Word of God down there at the North Carolina, South Carolina Free Will Baptist Conference with Bishop Phillips, and we had a wonderful time, and God moved in a mighty way. Uh, the first of the week, the Lord blessed Pamela and I to fly out to Colorado Springs, Colorado, on behalf of the National Church, the Church of God in Christ, and we met with some wonderful pro-life organizations, and I'm amazed at the things that God is doing in our church, and I want to give a great big shout out to our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shields, and his leadership uh, in uh, in this matter, and with Bishop Burns, uh, who is leading this effort, and I'm just glad to be a part of it, and I'll tell you something, we're saving babies, we're saving lives. God's doing wonderful things, and I am glad. And tonight, as I forementioned, we will be here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ, taking place. Hey, and you know we're going to be here for, right? We're going to be here for Bible study. You guessed it. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to study the Word of the Lord together, and God's going to bless us real good. I have a couple of passages of Scripture that I want to read to you, and uh, I want you to hear me on this. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And this particular passage uh, deals with uh, man's relationship with man. Man, believer with believer. It is so important that the believers walk in lockstep, that we walk in the bonds of peace and we keep the unity of the spirit, that we mind the same things and that we abide by the same rules. Paul said uh, in uh, Philippians chapter number four and verse one, therefore my brethren dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. We're called to be unified with each other, but we're to stand and stand fast, but we're to stand fast in the unity of the faith. We're to stand fast in the truth of God's word. Listen, unity cannot be at the expense of doctrinal purity. I'm for working together. I'm for working with those who name the name of Christ. I'm for standing shoulder to shoulder and for us to uh, fight, for us fighting together for God's truth. But I am not for unity at, for the sake of unity. I am not for unity at the expense of doctrinal purity. Uh, I, I, the, the other day, and, and he released this, I, I didn't, and he released it because he wanted the people to know about it. It could have been done in private and not released, but it's out there and you've probably seen it. Uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant uh, went to a, uh, a LBGTQ plus church. Now you're talking about an oxymoron, an oxymoronic statement, a church, a LBGTQ plus church. Now the church is the ecclesia, the called out ones, called out and, and, and uh, separated for the sake of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to represent Jesus Christ, to represent the views, the positions, the teachings of the Bible. The Bible, uh, the Ecclesia is called out. We're, we're called out. We're, some pronounce it ecclo, Ecclesia. We're called out for Christ and for the Bible and the teachings of the Word of God. We, we represent Jesus, Jesus Christ. We're not just called out, but we're called out for a specific purpose. We're called out to be different. We're not different just to be different. We're different because our difference is we agree with the Bible and biblical teachings, you see. So therefore, if this is the truth, and if words still have meanings, can there be a LBGTQ plus church? Well, it, 
even though people call it that, the, the, the answer, if words have meanings, the answer is no, because you're not called out. They're not standing out for doctrine of purity. They're not standing out for Jesus Christ. They're standing out uh, representing a lifestyle that is repugnant to Scripture, that is repugnant to the doctrine of the Bible, to the doctrine of biblical Christianity, to the doctrine of the Church of God in Christ, to most religious doctrines that I know of. Uh, I don't know of any religion other than these people who have in their doctrine a, a support for a lifestyle that the God of the Bible calls an abomination. And please spare me, well, we can't find the word uh, homosexual uh, or homosexuality or LBGTQ community in the Bible. That's because the Bible was written before those words were even invented. But you certainly find the description of those lifestyles throughout Scripture, whether it's Old Testament or New. That a preacher would go to uh, 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 that church and apologize, if he apologizes on behalf of himself, that's between him and God. If he apologizes on behalf of himself and his con his congregation, that's between him and the members of his church. Maybe his members feel that way. And if they do, have at it. And God will bring you into judgment. But when you uh, apologize for the whole body, for the black church, for the whole church, now you're usurping authority that you do not have because now you're representing me. You're representing others who do not agree with your stance at all. And, and uh, so you do not have the right to speak for the rest of us and to speak for us publicly to get on this medium, to release it on, on Facebook, to put it out there on social media, uh, YouTube or wherever, and that, that you are apologizing for the body of Christ. Well, this member of the body of Christ uh, uh, has something to say about that. And, and my position is I do not apologize uh, for any stance or position that I have taken. Uh, in the past and that I currently represent in opposing uh, the LBGTQ plus uh, community, if you will, um, because as far as I can tell, the Bible has not changed and opposing a lifestyle that the God of the Bible calls an abomination is not, now hear me well, it is not a position of hate. It is not a position of being judgmental. It is not being mean. It is not being unforgiving. It is not having a, a bone to pick with any particular group of people. It is simply standing with God. It's standing on the side of the scriptures. And uh, I don't know if things like this are done uh, to be attention getters or whatever the case may be. Uh, but I do know this. These things cannot go unanswered because they represent all of us. And people tend to think that blacks are monolithic, that what one uh, African-American says, it represents all African-Americans. Well, let me tell you something. I speak for me and I speak for the God of the Bible here and I'm speaking for scriptures. Uh, even though there may have that, that there are cases where uh, uh, Protestant mem uh, ministers uh, in the black community, white community, and others have gone too far, have said things that they should not have said, uh, have, have made uh, examples that they should not have made. But any preacher who have who stands on the side of the Bible on this issue is standing on the side of right. And, uh, and yes, sometimes the truth hurts your feelings. Sometimes the truth, oh, makes you cry. It's called the offense of the gospel. God's truth is designed. It's designed to prick your heart. It's designed to bring all of us 
face to face with how sinful our lives uh, uh, are and how sinful we were and how wrong we were and how wicked we were. And that, that, that offense brought conviction and that conviction caused every one of us, those of us who are saved, to cry out to the Lord. And say, oh God, have mercy upon me, a, a sinner. Oh God, I'm ashamed of my lifestyle. Oh God, I'm wrong. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for the wickedness of my behavior. I heard a preacher and I was angry when I heard him. I was upset. How dare that man tell me that I can't turn myself as a male into a woman? How dare that man tell me that my urges for sex with members of the same sex is wrong. How dare that man say from his pulpit, oh, that for me to be in a lesbian relationship is wrong. How dare that man stand up and preach and say that pedophilia is wrong. But oh God, that man made me angry or that woman made me angry when they said it. But you know what? The anger came because I had to come face to face with how wicked I am. And not just with this particular subject, with any subjects, but this is the, the issue that we're, that we're dealing with now because of what the preacher did. Listen, sometimes there is no pretty way to tell the truth. Sometimes there is no soft way to lay it out there. But every preacher out there who is Loyal to God's truth, you got to stand. We've got to speak up. When things like this are done, we have to make it known on the same platform, on the same level that the offense was committed. We've got to make it known you don't represent me. You're not representing me, Brother Bryant, when you apologize for the body of Christ. I'm a part of the body of Christ. Uh, I didn't get a phone call. I didn't get I didn't get a heads up. I didn't say, hey, brother Wooden, here's what we're going to do. So therefore, we respond in kind by just simply saying, no, that apology doesn't include me. I think the thing, the position that I've taken and many like me for when it comes to this matter, I believe that our positions are right. I believe that our positions are true. I know that our positions are in line with scripture. So uh, no apology necessary. And most certainly I want the community to know that in the apology that was given, that did not include the upper room church of God in Christ, nor the things that Bishop Wooden has had to say on this platform at this medium and put in the pulpit or anywhere else. And we will continue to say the same things because we love the LBGTQ community too much to lie to them. We love you too much to soft pedal your sins. We love you too much to pretend that wrong is not wrong and that right is not right and that there's not a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. The loving preacher to the community is the preacher who is saying what I'm saying right now. The softies who are beginning to affirm sin and apologize for sin and not tell you to come out of sin, those people don't love you. And I'll close with this. The most loving thing that anyone can ever do is to tell the truth. What can be more loving than to warn the loss that they are lost. What can be more loving than to say to people who are trying to mix immorality with religion and come up with a brand of their own, even make their own Bible and try to come up with, a, as Paul called it, another gospel. Paul says, which is not another. See, there ain't but one true gospel. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And we've got to contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the body of Christ. Because evil men have crept in. They've crept in unawares and they have tried to take this truth 
and to corrupt it with wickedness and to mix it with all kinds of things. Well, this preacher here is fighting for doctrinal purity. I believe that the Christian doctrine is complete as it is. It doesn't need to be tweaked by me. It doesn't need to be improved by me. There is nothing that I need to add to it that can improve it. There's nothing I can take away from it to make it better. I'll tell you the only thing I need to do with the gospel and you too, for that matter, is just preach it and live it and let the chips fall where we, where they may. And you know what? God will save and God will deliver. So let's fight for unity. Let's work together, but you, we can't have unity at the expense of disloyalty, at the expense of loyalty, excuse me, to God's truth. My loyalty is first and foremost to the truth of God. Glory to God, to the Bible. All right, my time's up. Just wanted to bring that up. And I'm going to talk tonight about uh, uh, some things that I think is going to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> I get a kick out of that. I love it. We are going to study the word of the Lord together. Make it a great afternoon. God bless.